So we have defined the E2 integral as a map from H2, which is a space of processes that lies within L2 of your time interval, C01, cross omega, right? So it's a space of processes, uh, functions of the time and the probability parameter that also happen to be um, adapted and uh, progressively measurable. And then you go into the space L2 omega of random variable. And, and the way you do that is to f, you associate uh, the integral of f of t d b t from 0 to 1. And you have to remember that this integral is defined as the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral 0 to 1 of f n t d b t, where f n t, uh, f n is a sequence in h2 naught that converges to f in l2 naught. Right, so that is the Ito integral. It takes a process and it gives you a random variable. But now what we would like to do is form a version of the Ito integral that sends a process to a process. So question, how do we define a Ito integral that sends an h2 process to um, an, another uh, H2 process. And the you know, naive guess, I would say, would be to take the function f, the process f, to the process t maps to the integral from 0 to t of f of s dbs. And we haven't quite, well, we could just uh, change our definition of e to integral to go 0 to t, or you can take the indicator function of 0 t and then integrate that against f of s d b s, right? This is a perfectly valid h2 process. So this in e2 integral is well defined and you could uh, say, well, this is going to be my e2 integral, my extended e2 integral mapping process to process. Now, the problem with that is that if you have set a t in f t, so for some t in 0, 1, uh, take a set that has probability 0. Right, now you can change your process uh, at fixed time t on that set a t in any way you want. If you modify a element of L2 on a set of measure 0, you're actually not changing it at all because everything is defined up to almost everywhere uh, equivalents. So, right, now if I form the set t cross a t, so f, an element of h2, um, can be modified, so, or more, I should say, not f itself, but f t, or i tilde of f t dot, uh, can be modified on t cross a t since the probability of t cross a t as a subset of 0, 1 cross omega is 0. But now the problem is when you take the union of all these things, you get that your Ito integral defined as this i tilde can be modified on the union of all these sets in any way you want, right? For each t, you can modify it uh, on a t, your random variable omega goes to f t omega in any way you want. But the problem is the probability of that set may not be zero. Right, because although each individual set in that union has probability zero, the union is over something uh, uncountable. So the probability of the union may not be zero. So your uh, Ito integral going from process to processes defined in this particular way is actually defined up to sets that may not have measure zero. So it's not well defined, right? So that's really a, a problem. You cannot just naively take your uh, definition here that was going processes to random variable and extend it as a, as a 
integral processes to processes just by multiplying by this indicator function. This feels like it's the right thing to do. However, this is not well defined because this is only defined up to these sets at least, and these sets may not have probability zero. So what we will see uh, in this video is how we remedy that problem and make sure that this um, defines uniquely a process. And the way to do that is to say, well, I'm actually not going to look at every possible modification of that up to such sets. I'm going to pick one that makes this particular process not just an H2 process, but a continuous martingale. And the point is, there's a unique continuous martingale that agrees with this almost everywhere. And so if we force the Ito integral to be on the one hand defined like this as an element of H2, but also be a continuous martingale, then it is well defined. So here is the theorem we about to prove, theorem 4.10. So we're still integrating uh, H2 processes. We want to create a process through this uh, definition 4.5, but as we just discussed, this may be ill-defined. But what a theorem tells us is that there exists a continuous martingale, and in fact, it's going to be unique, um, with respect to the standard Brownian motion, very Brownian filtration, and um, this martingale agrees with this integral of the process when you stop it at time t, right? So this uh, might have many different versions as an element of, uh, of L2 uh, that are incompatible, but there's one of them and a unique one of them that is a continuous martingale. So how do we prove this theorem? We take an f in H2 uh, and we want to define the integral of indicator function 0t times f. So the first thing we need to do is have an approximating sequence because that's the way we define the Ito integral of an H2 process. So we take fn in H2 naught for all n in n such that um, f minus fn in L2 norm, L2 of 0, 1 cross omega tends to 0 as n goes to infinity. All right? That's my approximating sequence. And I'm going to explicitly write what this approximating sequence look like. Um, Fn, say at a point t and omega is going to be a sum, let's say k equal 1 to capital N of a n or a k n of omega uh, times the indicator function of tk n tk plus one n of t and where we have um, a k n belongs to f t k n for every k equal one to n capital n could depend on little n and uh, for every n. And the sequence tkn is an increasing sequence that starts at zero um, ends, that's strictly, ends and end up at tn n plus one being equal to one, right? That's generically speaking, what's what the way h2 not processes look like. So what is the integral restricted to 0t of fn? Okay, the Ito integral of that. Well, I have to know where t is. So let's pick a k uh, between 1 and capital N, such that t is between tk and tk plus 1. It's a unique k that does that. And then the integral is, by definition of the Ito integral, a k n times b t minus, so the, all of these are functions of omega, of course, they're random variable. So b t minus b t k n, and then you've got plus the sum j running between 1 and uh, this particular k minus 1 of a j n b 
tj plus 1 and minus btj of n. And that is by definition of the Ito integral for H2 naught process. And I'm going to call that xtn, this random variable, which is random variable in L2 of omega. Now, what we know is that we know that for every t in 0, 1, xtn minus uh, g integral of indicator function of 0 t times f. Now this in the L2 of omega norm has to go to zero, that's by Ito isometry and therefore by the construction really of the Ito integral for H2 processes. This is really defined as the, the limit of this approximating process and we've seen that it's independent of the choice of approximating sequence. But that is for every t, right? for every t I get a convergence in L2. Now that's not what I want. I want to construct a continuous martingale as the limit of my approximating processes, right? So I want to limit in the space of continuous function. So to do that, I want to exploit Dube's uh, L2 martingale inequalities, and uh, that requires xtn as a function of t, so as a process in t, to be a martingale. It's in L2, that's for sure, and that's by construction of the Ito integral, uh, but it's also a martingale. And actually, I'm not going to make that a claim, I'm going to make that an exercise. That's a very good exercise um, to do. And just uh, the, the hint to do that exercise is that if you have a, you know, if your t is uh, greater than s uh, and um, let's say it's greater than some tk n and that tk n is greater than s then whenever you would take the conditional expectation of a k n b t minus b t k n given f s and by the tower property it's the same thing as the conditional expectation of a k n b t minus b t k n uh, given f t k n and then further condition on f s but now if you look at this um, conditional expectation here uh, a k n is f t k n measurable and the b t is a uh, difference of a of a martingale at a different time because bt the brand motion itself is a martingale so this whole thing is equal to zero that's the key uh, step in showing that xtn is a martingale now that we know it's a martingale and we know that this is in l2 what does our dupe l2 inequality give us so it gives us the following so by dupe's l2 inequality so I can say something about the, uh, the soup for t between 0 and 1 of xtn minus xtm. Take the L2 norm of that. Let's say square it. So for n and m in n. And I want to show that I have a Cauchy sequence in the space of continuous functions. So in order to do that, I have information about this L2 norm of the soup, and I'm going to use um, you know, basic properties of probability to say that uh, the supremum of xtn, the probability of this supremum being large, is smaller than 1 upon epsilon squared times the L2 norm of this supremum. Okay, so that's for any positive epsilon. So now Dube gives me that this is smaller than 1 upon epsilon square times x1 of n minus x1 of m in L2 squared. But what is that? I mean, this is literally uh, the Ito integral of fn minus fm. Right, and so by Ito isometry, this has to be the same as 1 upon epsilon square times the L2 norm, L2 over time and the probability space of Fn minus Fm squared. But we know that goes to zero uh, as n and m goes to infinity uh, because 
fn converges to f. So since fn uh, is Cauchy, we can make these differences fn minus fm as small as we want, as we pick um, n and m large enough. So we can pick a subsequence. So we can pick uh, an increasing sequence of real number nk such that um, the probability that the supremum from t between 0 and 1 of xtn minus xtm is greater than say, sorry, I'm going to put n equal nk and m in plus 1 and m equal nk such that having that greater than say 2 to the minus k is smaller than 1 upon 2 to the minus k squared and then I can make my fn minus fnk minus fnk plus 1 as small as I want and I'm going to make them smaller than 2 to the minus 3k such that this whole thing is smaller than 2 to the minus k right I can do that by picking an approximating uh, by picking a an appropriate subsequence because this quantity can be made as small as I want because fn is Cauchy in L2. So what does that tell me? Um, that tells me that these probabilities here are summable. Right. But if they are summable, then the borel cantilly lemma tells me that uh, with probability one, there's only finitely many terms where this uh, supremum is large. So by Borel Cantilli, uh, there exists a set, let's call it E, included in omega that has probability one, such that for every omega in E, the, um, uh, the set, so supremum, I should say like that for, such that uh, there exists a n, well, such that, okay, such that the supremum of xt nk plus 1 of omega minus xt nk of omega is smaller than 2 to the minus k uh, for all but finitely many k in n. So that's the supremum from t between 0 and 1. But what is that telling me? That's telling me that therefore for every omega in E uh, this supremum xt uh, n of nk of omega as a sequence in k uh, is a Cauchy sequence. So sorry, no, that's not the way to put it. So this, you know, this is the, the difference of the supremum. So this is the norm in the space of continuous function. So for every omega in E, the map T goes to xt and k of omega. Uh, this sequence of function, functions of k, is Cauchy in the space of continuous function on 0, 1. But that space is complete, so I have a limit in the space of continuous function. So what does that mean? That means, therefore, there exists a, um, so for every omega in E, There exists a map t goes to xt of omega, uh, which is a continuous function on 0, 1, and which is such that uh, the supremum of a t 0, 1 of xt and k of omega minus xt of omega goes to 0 as k goes to infinity. So I have defined a continuous 
function x t of omega for every omega in the set E and the set E as probability 1. So I have defined almost surely my, uh, con my well, what I hope is my continuous martingale. So what I know is that uh, this is a continuous process, but I have to show now that this is a martingale uh, and uh, this is indeed coinciding with the ETO integral of the indicator function of zero t times fn. So let's do that now. Okay, so first of all, there's a slightly subtle point. We have that for every t in 0, 1, x, t, and k uh, certainly tends to something in L2, right? So in fact, it tends to what? It tends to the integral of f and k. So minus the integral 0, t times f and k in L2 of omega, this goes to zero. So we do have convergence in L2, but we don't know if this right here is actually, um, or more precisely, the limit of these things uh, is actually in L2. So we have that x, t, and k goes to some y, t, as k goes to infinity uh, in L2, and we want to show that this yt is xt. Now, well, what happens almost uh, everywhere? Well, almost everywhere we have that xt and k omega goes to xt of omega as k goes to infinity. That's for every omega in E, and E has probability 1. So yt has to be xt almost everywhere, so they have to agree as elements of L2. So we have that xt and k certainly goes to xt in L2. Now, we have to show that this xt is also a martingale. So how do we do that? Well, we look at the expectation of xt minus xs given fs. We want to show that this is zero. We're actually going to show that the expectation of the absolute value of that is zero. And then we use our approximating sequence. So what do we do? We use triangle inequality and we and, um, and Jensen, and we say that this is smaller than the expectation of xt minus xt and k uh, plus the expectation of x s sorry x t and k minus x s and k given f s and then take the expectation of that that's the middle term and then we have the last term where we just use jensen and control by the expectation of x n x s and k minus x s right now this middle term here, which is the only one where I haven't applied Jensen and got the absolute value inside, that's because I don't want to do that. This is zero using the fact that xt and k is a martingale. So this entire thing is equal to the uh, L1 norm of xt minus xt and k plus the L1 norm of xs and k minus xs1. And that is true for every k in n. Now you can control the n for every t greater than s in 0, 1. So you can control the L1 norm by the L2 norm, that just cauchy schwarz inequality, and you get the L2 norm of xt minus xt and k plus the L2 norm of xs and k minus xs, and this goes to 0 as k goes to infinity Right, because we've just seen that. I mean, xt is the limit as a in the space of continuous function of the uh, process xt and k, but also for fixed t is the L2 limits of it by uniqueness of L2 limits. All right, now that gives me the martingale inequality. So what have we got? We've got that xt as a process is a continuous L2 martingale ok 
Okay, and by uniqueness of um, limits, uh, it has to be unique. But also if I had two uh, different continuous L2 martingale and they agree on all the, the rational points, um, by continuity, they would have to be equal. So this is this unique L2 martingale that I was looking for. Now, the last thing I have to show is that this is indeed the integral of indicator function of zero t times f. But that's pretty uh, clear now because if I look at xt minus this integral of indicator function of zero t times f, and I do that for any t uh, in zero one, then what do I get? Uh, I get that the L2 norm of that is smaller than xt minus xt and k. Again, that's going to be for every k in n. Uh, plus by triangle inequality, the uh, eto integral of the in indicator function of zero t times f and k minus f, right? Because that's what xt and k is, it is this integral. And then you can apply eto isometry and you get that it's xt minus xt and k in L2 norm plus the L2 norm of f and k minus fn. Maybe I'm going to throw away now this indicator function that I don't need on the on the second term. All right, it's just going to make the L2 term smaller. Um, and uh, now xt goes to xt and k goes to xt in L2 norm. That's what we've just proven because in fact it converges uh, uh, in the space of continuous function and this goes to zero because well f and k has been chosen as the as a approximating sequence for f in h2 so this entire thing goes to zero as k goes to infinity so in l2 xt has to be equal to the integral i wanted uh, and therefore well, what does that mean that they equal in l2 that means that they equal almost everywhere so xt is a continuous L2 martingale and on top of that xt is equal to this integral almost everywhere and that concludes the proof of theorem 4.10